Taylor Swift, Harry Styles, Lady freaking Gaga. At a first look, these might just seem like the world's most famous pop stars, but <laughs> this makes no sense. This is not a conspiracy video. I was doing some research on celebrity cookbooks and just famous people cookbooks and I've noticed that a lot of pop stars, a lot of the biggest like stars in the world right now, they don't really write cookbooks but they actually are very open about recipes that they own, recipes that they follow and I thought there's definitely potential for a good YouTube video here, so this is what I'm gonna be testing out today. I picked three of the biggest celebrities in the world right now, and we're basically going to simulate like a day challenge, so we're gonna be make one dish that is breakfast, one that is lunch, and also dinner. This might be just me, but I think it's so fascinating to find out secret things about celebrities, or like the most human parts of their lives. Like they eat like all of us, they go to the toilet like all of us. I was just picturing Katy Perry at the toilet and why is that in my head right now? There's definitely a mystery about celebrities and their daily lives and I think following their recipes, their favorite foods and the recipes are actually made by them. There's definitely something interesting here. So that's what we're gonna be doing for today's video and I really hope you guys are excited as much as I am. By the way, before I get into it, this is a very small kitchen, so just keep in mind this might be a little bit weird, but I like it. We're cozy in here, I feel like we're very much close together, mostly because my face is right on the camera. Obviously we're gonna start this with breakfast, and the pop star that I chose for breakfast is definitely biased because this is like my favorite celebrity. If you've watched my videos, you probably know that I'm talking about Taylor Swift. I've actually met Taylor this year, and I've got so much tea to spill about that and I want to make a separate video about it but I don't know if that's something you want to watch. If you'd like to watch a video in which I talk about meeting Taylor Swift and spilling all the tea and all the details, definitely give the video a like. Taylor did these secret sessions in which she invited fans to come into her house and she baked them cookies and then one of the fans asked her on Tumblr, can I please have the recipe for your cookies? And she actually shared the recipe with everybody. Essentially she said that there's two different ways that you can make this cookie recipe. One of them is the easy way which is you go to the store and you buy already made dough and then you follow her very simple steps and the other one is to make them from scratch which if you know me uh, I don't have skill to do that I would probably set this kitchen on fire so we're gonna do the easy Taylor Swift recipe which is chai tea cookies. So here we've got the ingredients to make our Taylor Swift recipe cookies. Of course we have to start these videos in a disaster. I actually bought the wrong cookie dough mix and I bought white chocolate when I was meant to buy just plain sugar cookies. I'm gonna have to pick every single piece of white chocolate out of here. The quick and easy way is to make sugar cookies from a sugar cookie mix. I mean we kind of fell apart already. And then open a packet of chai tea and pour it into the batter as you make it and that's basically the recipe I mean the simple version of it we need one bowl for the cookies and one for the white chocolate chips as usual we've got Betty Crocker saving the day so I'm gonna put the cookie dough mix oh I'm not gonna be able to pick out the white chocolate I just spoiler alert it's not gonna happen this would actually take a lifetime and I love making YouTube videos and I'm a very patient person, <laughs> just not this much. If you've ever wondered how many chocolate chips come in a packet of cookie dough, that is basically it. It's quite a lot if you ask me. So according to Betty Crocker, we just add some water to this and then that is basically cookie dough. I'm not sure how much it is, should have probably read that before. It's freaking cookie dough, nobody's gonna die. This is exactly why I could have never had a serious career. It's just open heart surgery. Maybe a little bit more, it's looking drier than my back. I'm just gonna use my hands because every time you put your hands in something, it just comes out better. This is such a small amount of dough, like that's, oh, that's very, very little and I just dropped some on the floor. But Betty Crocker is cashing in on this because this is like enough for three cookies. Finally, to the most important part of the recipe, we're going to add the tea. This is what's going to make it the chai tea cookies. So here we've got some original chai tea. I think I've done this before, but it always feels wrong to just add it. Oh my god, like that. 
just the whole thing looking pretty good if you ask me it kind of smells like Starbucks, which is probably what Taylor Swift smells like. So there we go. We're ready to make these into cookies, and the cookies that Taylor made were pretty standard. They didn't look very, like, perfect. I will be honest with you guys, it smells freaking incredible. Like, these are probably the best smelling cookies I've ever made. It kind of smells like fall and bath and body works and exposing all the people who did you wrong. So this would be our fourth cookie. And then for the last cookie, um, I'm going to make a cookie shaped like Taylor Swift. So let me smooth it out a little bit more. But there you go. Name a more iconic snake. Kim Kardashian could never. And here we've got our Taylor Swift chai cookies. They are fresh out of the oven. Very crunchy, but also a little spongy in the middle. Seems like a good cookie. I freaking con it, guys. <laughs> a Taylor Swift shaped cookie. So we need to frost these now, and Taylor used an eggnog frosting, which obviously we're not gonna do because I can't buy eggnog this time of the year, especially in England. So we're gonna do a normal icing on top and then sprinkle with cinnamon, which is what Taylor Swift did for the cookies and then we can try them and judge Taylor Swift's taste for cookies which I'm assuming it's going to be great because these smell delicious and like the whitest cookies in the world. If we've managed to come all the way here this is going to be just fine. This actually looks very similar to the cookies that Taylor posted on Instagram. So this is a special one so we're gonna zoom in on Miss Swift. When Reputation first came out, I was like, mm, I'm not sure about this, but now it's actually probably my favorite Taylor Swift album, obviously, apart from Red. Now we're going to sprinkle the whole thing with some holy ground cinnamon. <laughs> okay, that was bad, and I'm sorry. Hey, this actually looks pretty good. Here we've got our Taylor Swift recipe cookies, the chai cookies, but most importantly, here we've got Taylor Swift herself. We love a collaboration video. I'm gonna try this one because I wanna save that one for the thumbnail. Thumbs up for an actual honest YouTuber. Taylor, I love you and I'm so sorry. Oh my god. The credit obviously goes to Betty Crocker, but this is so good. Taylor got her stuff together because this is a truly good combination. I know it sounds weird putting a tea bag into cookies, but and somehow this is the closest we'll get to a Taylor Swift interview in 2018. Mm. The crunchy bit is really, really good. This is definitely a winning combination. Taylor Swift gets credit for this, and Betty Crocker as well. I expected delicious, and this has still blown my mind, but lunch is going to be even better. So definitely stay tuned for that. I don't think you guys are ready for the meal that I chose for lunch, because I don't think I'm ready myself, because for lunch, we're gonna cook with some Brussels sprouts. This is definitely stinky and you might be thinking which pop star eats freaking Brussels sprouts Who is like the weird celebrity that loves Brussels sprouts and some of you might have guessed it right Mr. Harry Styles. I think Harry Styles was promoting his new album and he did this interview on BBC and someone asked him what his favorite food was and just randomly he says Brussels sprouts and I think they go on to ask him how the Brussels sprouts are cooked, what's his favorite dish to make with Brussels sprouts. I found the recipe on Refinery29, I think this is a very popular website. Apparently Harry said that Brussels sprouts are the new kale which both things, not my favorite, not gonna lie. He also said that his favorite way to eat Brussels sprouts is in a curry sauce. And I've never heard of Brussels sprouts in a curry, but maybe that's just me. Maybe a lot of you guys are gonna be like, perfectly normal, eat it every Monday. We're gonna give this a try and see what we can say about Harry Styles' taste in vegetables.
so far are not looking great. So the first thing that we need is a pen. This one is pretty easy. There's not too many steps. A few essential things like olive oil. And this right here is the exact same sauce that Harry Styles uses for his recipe. Uh, not sure if the camera is focusing because I can't really see it right now, but I'm gonna believe. And then I stole some salt and pepper from Starbucks, <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna be using. Times are tough for YouTubers. No, I'm just joking, but you know, might as well use it. So according to the recipe, um, Harry Styles starts by adding some olive oil. To the olive oil, we're supposed to add some garlic. Oh shoot, I think that's too much. I know you're not supposed to use metal for this, but I can't find any other spoon. Ouch, this, uh, this was way too much. So we're gonna mix the garlic a little bit until it's a little toasty. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to cut this in half, which <laughs> I'm not gonna be very good at doing, but let's give it a try. And if you thought I was going to use um, a chopping board, then you have way too much faith in me. No, seriously, I'm staying at an Airbnb, so this is not my house, so I don't really have a chopping board here. Oh my god, these are frozen. If you try this recipe, maybe try defrosting them beforehand, because this is not gonna go anywhere, you know what? I'm not too bad at I'm gonna add some salt. See, this is perfect, because it's already measured. And a little bit of pepper. Gordon Ramsay could never. This might take a little longer because um, we're cooking them whole and these are supposed to be cut in halves, but I'm not scared of cooking this for a long time. If you're my mom, stop watching the video, but this actually smells delicious. I would never admit this to my mom. As you can see, this is cooking nicely, but do you guys see that little Brussels sprout right there? That is literally me, <laughs> my subscriber count versus other YouTubers that you guys watch. I don't really know if this is cooked or not, but I'm going to add the curry because I don't have my whole life for this. Like, I love cooking, but I love eating more. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that looks kind of weird. I'm not one to doubt Harry Styles' words. If he says this is delicious, I'm going to give it a fair try, but to me, this is a look. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let this cook for what? Um, 10 more minutes to make sure they are soft. Oh, these are soft already. I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit, but that is essentially the recipe. I think I didn't miss any step apart from cutting the Brussels sprouts. It literally looks like vegan Brussels sprouts. Ikea, <laughs> it's shook. Is it just me or does this look actually kind of delicious? Unexpectedly so. I mean, at first I thought this was so simple. I kind of did an okay job apart from obviously cutting down the Brussels sprouts, but now that it's cooling down, I can see that the oil separated from the curry, so the whole thing is like way too greasy. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's basically a greasy mess. That is also how I would describe myself on Tinder. As long as the Brussels sprouts are not frozen, I'm down for this. I could be wrong and this could be like a traditional like curry, but let me know in the comment section. I hope this is not offensive for Indian people. I am so sorry. I want to go for one more, but so far, I am speechless. Oh my god. Everybody mark your calendars. This is the day in which I enjoy Brussels sprouts fully without like pretending like I like it. This is honestly the combination I never knew I needed until today. Mm. I'm so sorry, Taylor. This recipe is a lot better than the cookies. Like, it's something that I traditionally don't enjoy a whole lot. I'm so thirsty right now, and I feel like my mouth is on fire. Um, I am way too white for this level of spice, and I think this is mild, so... 
I'm gonna leave. Like I said, to me this sounded like a very bizarre combination and now I recognize I was wrong all along. I need some water and next time I see you guys it will be dinner time. Out of all the things we made in this video, I am definitely the most excited for dinner because we're talking about a pasta dish which is my everything. You guys know how much I love carbs. At least to me this is a very unexpected celebrity who came up with this recipe. This is actually a recipe by Lady Gaga and I've actually done some research and not only she is Italian which I didn't know but also her family all of them are supposed to be great chefs. I think her dad has got two restaurants and insanely popular like food places in New York. It was very shocking to me because she sings, she can cook, she's got all these talents and I'm sitting here making YouTube videos. I mean, the world really isn't fair. This is supposed to be her family recipe for pasta with tomato sauce. I found this on a CBS or BBC website. I can't remember which TV station it was, but I'm hoping that it's reliable. I can't obviously vouch for this 100%. The first step of the recipe is to cook some whole grain spaghetti. And if you ask me, why does Lady I can use whole grain spaghetti instead of the delicious normal one. I don't really know why. Maybe it's one of those sacrifices you have to do to join the Illuminati or something. I don't know why anybody in their right mind would cook this. So, oops. <laughs> The first step to make our pasta sauce is we have to cut 15 tomatoes. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're supposed to cut these in half. I didn't really wash them. Um, I feel like I've eaten so much trash that my body is probably immune to whatever <laughs> is in this. I'm really confused about something. One of the main ingredients for this pasta is fennel and I've never actually bought it. I don't really know what kind of vegetable this is. It looks like a root, but I think the part that we're supposed to use is this, like the green part, but it doesn't come with any of it. It seems like someone already cut it off, so I don't really understand how I'm supposed to use this. I looked it up on Google and like, <laughs> this is essentially gonna be a fennel pasta <laughs> without fennel. The past is alive and well for now, so let's move on into making the sauce. And by the way, this is supposed to cook for like an hour, but I'm gonna cook it for like 10 minutes. I will send you my postcode so you can send me hate mail. So we're gonna add the tomatoes, 15 of them. So we're gonna cook the tomatoes and let me check the recipe for the next steps because I am clueless about this one. Tear baby fennel into pieces, but like, I don't understand. Do you cut it into chunks or do you just remove the green bits? Because they're all gone. I don't know. You know what, I'm just gonna add the green bits and you guys can roast the only one. So according to the recipe, we need one star anise. It's not a star anus. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but that's what it is. I don't know if you guys ever cook with this, but I hate the smell of it. It kind of smells like medicine. So this has been cooking for like 15 minutes. So for the next step, it says to make like a well in the center of the sauce. Make a well in the tomato sauce and pour some olive oil. That's probably a good amount. I mean, she is Italian. Fresh basil. I actually really like the flavor of basil and I'm gonna add a lot of this. By the way, I removed the star anus because I don't really like the taste of it and it was kind of grossing me out. So we also need garlic. I'm gonna just use the same garlic paste that I bought for lunch. I guess we just have to mix the whole thing and that is basically our <laughs> very, very non-authentic Lady Gaga sauce. I definitely didn't follow this recipe. This looks pretty good. I mean, it definitely didn't cook for one hour. So I guess we just add the sauce. I don't know if we should mix it in or kind of just like leave it on top. Probably that. <laughs> this is probably the best looking meal I've made all week. And it probably looks like trash to all of you guys. Serve with grated cheese. Okay, that part I definitely can do. So here we've got some grated cheese and that truly makes everything better. Uh, you know what, in looking at this dry mess, I'm gonna say that we need all of that. <laughs> 
This is a Lady Gaga family recipe and it was definitely the most difficult out of all of them. Mostly because everything took so long, but then also because he had so many spices and like, like these fresh like leaves that I've got no idea what they do to a dish. I have no idea how to use them. Altogether, it created this disaster. I'm not excited for the whole grain pasta, but I think the cheese on top might just be good enough to make up for all of this. Italian people, Lady Gaga fans, I am so sorry. <laughs> I did you wrong in this video and I'm fully aware. I kind of want to try just the sauce alone with the cheese. Wow, that sauce literally tastes like restaurant, Italian restaurant sauce. It's really weird because it was super easy to make. I just realized that I'm eating whole grain pasta. I didn't even think about it because everything else is so delicious and it's not just the cheese. I tried the sauce and the sauce is like the best part. I think something in here tastes a little bit minty. I think it might be the fennel, but you guys will definitely let me know in the comments. I love Taylor Swift's cookies. They were very, very good cookies. I love the Brussels sprouts because I usually don't like that. So it was very good as well. And this is probably the most difficult. I failed a lot in it. And the fact that somehow it still tastes good, like it really blows my mind. But if you enjoyed it and you want to see a part two, definitely give this video a like and maybe leave a comment down below. And let me know what other celebrities you want me to look up recipes for. I think Shawn Mendes might have some. So don't forget to leave a comment down below and give the video a like if you want to watch a part two. A huge thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel, everyone who's got my notifications notifications on you guys are the best I honestly say thank you in every video but thank you because if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be able to spend my every day making these videos which is the best part of my life so thank you to everyone who is subscribed I love you guys I think that's about it for this video guys I really hope you guys had a good time as you can see I had the best time I've got an insane amount of pasta to eat which I'm very excited for I love you guys and I will see you on my next video bye bye